Ravi is a Kirana store owner in a small town of Maharashtra. Every month when he goes out of stock, he would shut down his store for 3 to 4 days and then travel 60 kilometers to his nearest city to buy products for his store. And while doing so, he would lose out on thousands of rupees of business and also will spend thousands in transporting these goods from the city to his Kirana store. And the thing is, Ravi is not alone. India has more than 12 million Kirana stores and 10 million of them are in rural India, where people like Ravi are struggling to get products for their stores. None of the big FMCG companies have a strong distribution to reach these small villages and towns. But one Indian startup is changing this. They are helping these Kirana owners to get their groceries at the click of a button right at their store, all without owning any delivery vehicles or warehouses. This company is a unicorn made 4,755 crore rupees in revenue in FY23. And they're disrupting the rural B2B commerce market in India. Today, they're reaching 6 lakh Kirana stores in 1.2 lakh villages in India. The company I'm talking about is Elastic Run. So let's find out how they're solving this massive problem and what we as future entrepreneurs can learn from this. So, before we talk about why Elastic Run founders chose to solve this unsolvable problem, let's try to understand the problem in a bit more detail. In the intro, I mentioned how the FMCG distribution network in India is broken. So, let me give an example to help you understand that. Let's say there's a retail store owner, Kishan, whose store is in a city like Pune. He sells FMCG products like Maggi, soap and biscuits. Now, if he wants to get more Maggi, he can simply call a wholesaler or a distributor in his area who supplies Nestle products since Maggi is owned by Nestle and tell them he wants 100 Maggi packets. That particular distributor or wholesaler has Maggi stored in his warehouse and will send his vehicle to Kishan's location and deliver it to him. It's that simple. But if let's say Kishan's store is in a village which is 100 kilometers away from Pune, here the process is not that simple. Since there are no distributors or wholesalers anywhere near his village, he would have to call up one in Pune which is the nearest city from his village. And here he will get a response like Sorry, we don't service this area, but you can come here and get it yourself. So why did this happen? Why were these distributors and wholesalers ready to send a vehicle in Pune but not in a village far away? I think the answer is easy to understand. It's a simply demand and supply problem. When a distributor decided to send his own truck to a location inside the city, he wasn't just delivering Maggi packets to Kishan. He probably had more orders in the area and he would have clubbed all the orders together and send a truck to service all the retail shops in Kishan's area. But when it came to a remote village where there is less demand and a distributor will have to send a guy 100 km to a whole different village just for 100 Maggi packets, it makes no business sense. The transportation alone will cost more than the products. And if, let's say, a distributor or wholesaler wants to set up a warehouse nearby this village, he would have to invest a lot of money for the infrastructure, hiring people for operations, and finally buying delivery vehicles to make the operations feasible. So there's a big fixed cost here. So this is the problem. Because of low and unpredictable demand, high setup cost of warehouses, lack of delivery fleet, and low order value by these retailers in small villages, rural distribution in India is broken. And now that we are aware of the problem, let's understand what led to these three folks to go behind this to solve. Sandeep grew up in Buldhana, a small town more than 400 kilometers from Pune. He was well aware of the problem of lack of access to products that people in large cities take for granted. Sandeep's first job was at the logistical company DHL, where he met his future co-founders Shitis Bansal and Saurabh Nigam. After their DHL stint, all three of them worked at different jobs for next 10 years. But their passion for solving last mile logistics brought them together in 2016. All three of them understood the rural distribution problem and also knew that this was a big opportunity. At the time, out of 12 million retail stores in the country, 10 million were in rural India. And while the urban retail market was growing at just 3 to 5%, the rural market was growing at 15% per year. And despite this massive opportunity, no one was solving this. This is when this trio realized that because of their experience, they were perfectly suited to solve this problem. In this short clip, Sandeep explains the crux of their solution. The, the assets that are required for typically these kind of resources are the real estate space and uh, vehicles and people. And these assets are already available on the ground. So if you can build technology to, to source these assets from the ground uh, and stitch them together, you might be able to build virtual uh, 
transportation networks and that would serve you better you see fmcg companies traditionally have an asset heavy distribution network they basically have huge resources in the form of real estate delivery vehicles and people but these resources are underutilized most of the time so what elastic run was trying to do is to stitch all of these resources together with the help of technology and hence reduce the cost for everyone let me explain this with an example let's say there's a small retailer in a village who also has some extra space so what elastic run does is they partner with the shop owner to use his extra space as their mini warehouse this allows both parties to share the cost of real estate thus bringing down the cost for both of them and this is important because the problem in the rural villages and towns is that retailers are spread over vast distances so it's hard to reach them with one giant warehouse instead what elastic run does is it creates smaller partners closer to these retailers to easily reach them then you have local logistic companies their vehicles and delivery people are also underutilized most of the time so elastic run partners with them and they do so on an on demand basis instead of building a fully owned delivery fleet this saves fixed cost for elastic run and gives flexibility to these delivery companies to use their resources sources whenever they want and that's how elastic run has been able to create a network of micro distributors and entrepreneurs who are helping them build a flexible on demand logistic network in rural india and all of this without owning real estate delivery vehicles or hiring any full time employees and with this process they have been able to connect over 6 lakh stores across more than 1 lakh villages in india and for these kirana owners this process is both effective and economical they now get their supplies much quicker and don't have to travel to a bigger city to buy their products they can do so simply by clicking on the products they want to buy from elastic runs app and get them delivered at their doorstep just like shopping on amazon and flipkart so what we saw here is that both distributors and retailers are happy with the solution and this is what differentiates elastic run with other b2b suppliers like udan and jio mart so what companies like udan and jio mart are trying to do is that they are trying to cut the middleman or the distributor out and directly source products from fmcg companies and give it to the retailers elastic run on the other hand is not competing or trying to replace the fmcg distributor partnerships in fact they are trying to expand the reach of fmcg companies in places where their distributors are not able to reach this is a win win for everyone then there is a difference of target market between these companies so while udan and jio mart are targeting big cities and towns primarily elastic run is going really deep into to places where there was no such infra available and here is something very interesting despite focusing on bigger cities where the margins and opportunities are better udan is posting heavy losses compared to elastic run in terms of revenue to elastic run is growing much faster in fy23 their revenue increased by 25% as against udan's whose revenue actually went down by 43% so there's a clear indication here how elastic run is moving towards a sustainable business and according to its ceo they can turn profitable this year if they want in this section i want to talk about what moves elastic run is taking to move towards profitability in addition to providing efficient logistics elastic run wants to use its network to offer more services for their network partners which are fmcg companies and rural kirana store owners another very interesting thing they are doing is enabling e-commerce companies like flipkart and meesho to reach these villages where they had no presence earlier and while doing so they are reducing the cost for these e-commerce companies by almost 30% then this data remember i spoke about elastic runs presence in 1 lakh villages and 6 lakh retailers well their purchase data and insights are very valuable and elastic run is charging fmcg companies to access this data in addition the company is using this data to help increase the sales for their fmcg partners here is a video of sandeep explaining how they are doing this manufacturer of uh, baby diapers uh, who who was fairly low on the lower side in terms of the market share ownership we we tied up with them we came up with a, a small um, sachet kind of product of 5 rupees 10 rupees uh, diaper sachet and we took it to the rural market the the product went like it went crazy viral i mean no one ever thought that a uh, premium product like a baby diaper could be such a super hit in rural market so while the brand won on the uh own on the of course the business pnl it's the end consumer who never had access to a product like diaper 
that access got enabled only because there was a technology solution which could make that reach happen to the deepest part of the country at such a low cost. And finally, they are partnering up with NBFCs and banks to offer credit to their Kirana store owners. And here's the best part. Elastic Run gets their money right when the product is delivered. They don't work on credit, unlike most distributors who have to wait for the Kirana stores to sell the products before they get their money back. This has also been a key way for Elastic Run to be sustainable. In fact, the company has zero credit policy, which is very impressive. So in the end, what can we as future entrepreneurs learn from this case study of Elastic Run? I think the biggest learning is that solving a difficult problem helps in building a strong moat. And because of this, it gets harder for anyone to compete with you. Elastic Run took on a massive task of organizing rural distribution in India. And even though there are players now trying to compete with them, Elastic Run is virtually a monopoly in this space. So that's all I have for you in this video. Feel free to write your thoughts down in the comments. Let me know the most important takeaway for you from this Elastic Run story and I'll see you in the next one.